Hey, you guys, I'm waiting for this to kick in here. Sometimes it's a little bit slow with the Facebook Live. Comment below if you're here. Say hello where you're from. I want to see who's with me today. Um, just like yesterday, I am going to be taking questions at the end of our lesson today. This is the four-day series about food freedom and how to achieve food freedom in your life. I am Chris McBossley. I am a certified personal trainer, sports nutritionist, health and weight loss coach. My business is Create My Weight. And my main job in life, my main mission is to help people lose weight in a way that is sustainable and stress-free and to eat the foods they love and live their life. That is my ultimate goal. And so this week I'm gonna be sharing with you some highlights in terms of how to do that with my food freedom strategy. Like I said, yesterday was about nutrition. Today is all about fitness, all right? You might have seen earlier, I posted in the group about some of my favorite fitness lines. These are my old navy pants. I like to shop on a budget for my workout clothes because I get really, really um, bored of them, right? I like to kind of keep things changing. But, um, and then Athleta is my top today. So if you want to see more about fitness clothes, you can check out my post from earlier. But I want to jump into this topic um, because I can talk about fitness all day. I'm going to try to keep this brief. And before I jump into my main notes from today, you want to make sure you have a piece of paper and a pen with you today to take some notes. This is the rough outline of what we'll be talking about, but I'm going to be giving you a lot of goals, okay, when it comes to this topic. So before I jump into the lesson for today, I do want to share a little bit about my own story with fitness and how I got into it and how I'm able to continue with my fitness journey um, because fitness was not always something that I looked forward to. And I want to be really clear about that. And I'll be honest, guys, when I was a, a preteen, I should say, like 11 or 12 years old, I was always one of the bigger girls. I was always thicker, quote unquote. Um, my sister, Danielle, was like a beanpole. We called her Gumby. Um, she's actually in the group. She'll probably do this. And um, I was always like one of the bigger ones. So I was always very self-conscious as a child, you know. And my dad, God bless him, I love him. We just celebrated Father's Day a couple days ago. Um, but he would sometimes like comment on my body. Um, and not like, you know, say anything mean. But, you know, he would always kind of say like, you don't have to finish your plate or like don't eat all of that you know and i knew that i was like a little bit bigger my stepdad used to say i have tree trunk legs um so i grew up around that and so you know being 11 or 12 i was very self-conscious and so i got into sports because of that i took up soccer and i got into running because i wanted leaner legs i didn't want tree trunk legs right so i started running and then when i was in about ninth grade I started like meticulously counting my calories. You know, I, I would have like post-it notes like all over my house. I would like write down like for lunch, like what I had, I would count my calories. Like I was like crazy about it. And so fitness was something I got into because I wanted to be skinny, right? It wasn't like an innate desire. Um, I didn't really care about team sports. You know, I guess I ended up enjoying soccer. I joined the track team. I played softball. I got involved in sports, but my underlying mission for sports was because I felt, you know, I wanted to be skinnier. That was my ultimate goal. Okay. That's how I started. And then ultimately I fell in love with sports and I'll talk about that too. But I also want to, you know, I want people to understand too that sometimes people will look at me or think, oh, well, this girl doesn't know what it's like. Like she's naturally lean, you know, and she always liked working out. That's not true. Um, I didn't always like working out. I've always, and I am still to this day, I am the kind of person where like I have to exercise. I enjoy it, don't get me wrong, but I have to watch what I eat. I have to exercise to maintain my weight. I am not someone who's naturally thin. If I just stop exercising, don't care at all about what I eat, it will show on my body. So I have to work really hard. And I think a lot of women are like that. We see a lot of these fit people and we think, oh, well, they're just naturally lean. That's not true. Some people, guys, genetics plays a huge role. Um, I have some cousins that are so lean and beautiful and they don't exercise and they don't watch what they eat and, and they're able to stay skinny. And I'm like, that's awesome. Um, but am I jealous? No, because I love my life. I love what I built. This is a lifestyle for me. And I'm going to start sharing that with you guys this week. Um, and that's what food freedom is all about is having a sustainable, healthy lifestyle. But I want you guys to understand something that my body, like this is work, 
right? And it's not hard work. It's not, I mean, something I enjoy, but this doesn't come easy to me, right? So those of you who look at fitness, and I'll talk a little bit more about that today, fitness as like, it's not something I, you know, can do or need to do. There's a few reasons why fitness matters, and I'll talk about that, but I am not naturally lean, right? I work for this. I want you guys to understand that, okay? Um, and like I said, like I got into fitness because I wanted to, you know, change my body, and now I do because I want to keep my body, right? So it, weight maintenance is a big part of why we do fitness, too. So I'll talk about that. And I got into fitness at first with running, right? I was a, I love to run. That's why I joined soccer. I joined track team. I was a sprinter. And, you know, I competed all through high school and college. I went to Penn State, go Nittany Lions. Um, I ran a lot in college. I didn't run competitively at college. It was a D1 school. I did run the Penn Relays in high school, though. We were four by four champions, actually, my senior year. So I was a sprinter. I ran the 400, 200, 100. 55 indoor so I ended up you know taking running to the next level um, but I did not compete in college but after I graduated from college I ended up coaching for all the schools where I taught so I taught in lower Bucks County or upper Bucks County Pennsylvania um, in Palisades High School I coached track and cross country there and then I moved to Alexandria Virginia where I coached for T.C. Williams High School so if you actually saw Remember the Titans the movie I coached at the high school I coached track um, their football team hasn't been good since, you know, the 1970s or whatever it was. Um, but I coached the team, loved it. And then, yes, yeah, so I coached for about five, six years. And then when I moved to Florida, I didn't coach. Um, I picked up a lot of different endeavors. I got into personal training, teaching fitness classes. So no longer in the high school sect, but more with adults. And that's what I do now. I do fitness with adults. Um, so a little bit about me there, I say. But I started out running, that was my main passion. And even I lived up in, you know, DC, Virginia, I was, you know, competitive runner. I ran a lot of half marathons, a lot of 10 milers. I was training for the Boston Marathon, not Boston, Marine Corps Marathon. And I had a really bad injury. So I actually had to drop out. I was so bummed I was running for a charity. And so ever since then, running never been the same for me just because I got injured pretty badly. And I moved to Florida, and Florida is super flat and hot, so I don't run as much down here. So when I moved out of Florida, I really got into weight training. So weight training really became a huge part of my life, and that is really what transformed my body was the weight training. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that today. Um, but you know, to this day, guys, like I still do a combination of everything. You know, I still run a little bit. I definitely weight train. You've seen my workouts here in the group. I love doing some dance cardio now. I really got into that over the quarantine. And I do lightweights, I do bands. I'll talk all about the kinds of workouts to do. So I'll get into that today. So, you know, also in my background, I was a group exercise director. So I would hire instructors for my gym up in Virginia, the fitness equation. Um, so I would hire instructors, I would, you know, teach classes, I, I have all different certifications in different formats. Um, I love all different kinds of workouts and that's the way to keep things exciting. Okay, enough about the beginning. All right, I want to jump into the five steps here. Okay, five parts of my lesson for today with why um, fitness is a huge part of food freedom. Okay, so first of all, why fitness and movement matters, why it's important. And I get this question a lot, you know, like what's more important when it comes to weight loss, right? Is it diet or is it fitness? And I want to be really clear about something, guys. A lot of people say, well, it's all about nutrition, right? It's like 80 to 90 of nutrition and then it's exercise is the rest, right? Um, I have a whole different philosophy on that. I'll talk about that in the mindset training tomorrow. But when I look at, you know, weight loss and transforming your body and just like your life, I don't think it's either or, right? It's never either or. The answer should always be both. Fitness and nutrition are both important. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today in this training, okay? And here's why. So number one, guys, health. And I always say here in this group and, and to all my clients, health first, weight loss second, both with strategy, okay? Let's talk about this a little bit because first of all, the American Health Association, right? They say that minimum we should get 150 minutes of exercise per week for health, moderate exercise per week for health. So if you break that down, that's 30 minutes, five days a week, 
okay? That's just for health. That has nothing to do with weight loss. So that's like boosting your immune system. That's for improving your bone density. That's just for like, you know, preventing arthritis. We have to move our muscles and our joints, right? It's for keeping our mental health, right? That's just like the bare minimum, 150 minutes, you know, 30 minutes, five days a week. And a lot of people don't think that. A lot of people think, well, exercise is just for weight loss, right? That's not true. It's for health, for everything. So that's thing number one I want to really mention first. Um, but number two, I want to talk a little bit about, I'm actually going to give you guys my favorite analogy when it comes to fitness, okay? Um, even if you are healthy, all right, let's say you're super healthy, you have no problems. If your metabolism, if your gut and your digestive system aren't functioning properly, like let's call this combination your engine, okay? So let's say you are a car, this is my favorite analogy, you're a car, okay? And your gut health, your digestive system, all of that, that's your engine, okay? Metabolism's all related to each other, okay? Right? Um, your diet, okay, whatever you're eating, I talked about nutrition yesterday, won't have much of an impact on your body, okay, if your engine's not functioning properly. So you can have the best diet. This is why people, when they say to me, well, I'm eating really healthy, but my body's not changing, why? This is why, because your gut health, your digestive system, or maybe something with your metabolism, but don't get caught on metabolism yet, I'm gonna discuss that later. Um, there's something going on there, it's not functioning properly. And that's your engine, right? So how do you tune your engine? Right? How do you tune your engine, guys? It's with exercise. Exercise, a thousand percent, can help improve metabolism. We know that. It can improve your digestive system, and it can, in turn, improve your gut health overall. There's all this talk about gut health these days. Okay, let me drink the bone broth. Let me, you know, do less inflammatory foods. Absolutely, I'm all about that. But exercise, fitness, has such a role on your gut health. Okay? So... Let's talk about this a little bit. For this car analogy, I want you to envision a Lamborghini, okay? So a Lamborghini, let's, let's say there's a girl that she's a Lamborghini. She's in amazing shape and she has an amazing engine, right? And that's one of the big reasons why she's in great shape is because her engine is in shape, okay? Even if the fuel she puts into her body, okay, into her, her car, right? Even if the fuel she puts into her body isn't the best, okay? So let's take the Lamborghini. Let's say you give it really crappy fuel, like that E85 crap, whatever it is, okay? Even if you get it bad fuel, okay, the car is still going to run pretty good, right? Because the engine is spectacular. It's a great, it's a fast car, super great, okay? So this is like the person that has a great digestive system, great gut health, and a metabolism, right, all combined, that's their engine, who eats a decent diet, maybe sometimes crappy, they still have great energy and can be fit and healthy because they take care of their engine, okay? Um, or it's naturally optimal, right? Like people who eat whatever they want and they don't have to work out, they just have good genes, right? It's just from within. Um, and like I said before, guys, I'm not one of these people. Like I have to work for my health and my body, okay? So there are like the Lamborghinis, right? They just naturally have a good engine, so they can kind of get away with eating some things that aren't optimal. And then let's look at the, let's think of a second car, okay? Let's think of like an old Volkswagen, like one from like the 1960s, it's like super beat up. You see some people like restoring them. I was actually just in Denver, Colorado, and I walked by a house with this guy that was restoring old uh, Volkswagen. So I, found, I thought of this analogy here. Um, so an old Volkswagen. So this car's engine, okay, especially an old beat up one, isn't that great. Think about it, from like the 1960s, it's so old, it's probably rusty, whatever. It's outdated and it needs a lot of TLC, okay, to function properly. So even if you put turbo fuel, like the best gasoline ever, the best diet, guys, think about this, you're the car, you're a person, right? Um, you put the best fuel into it, okay, it will improve the performance, it'll pr improve the car a little bit, but not much, okay? Um, it's because, you know, those of us, it's because the car, you need a tune-up, okay? You need to take care of yourself, okay? Um, and this is how a lot of people 
who are out of shape, don't exercise, but they still eat super healthy, okay? They're putting great fuel into their body. They're, they think they are at least, right? Um, that's why they're not seeing results. You know, it's because they have a poor metabolism, they have poor gut health, and they're not tuning their engine. And remember guys, exercise tunes our engine. So that's car number two. All right, last thing guys, and I wanna be honest, like I don't want you guys, you don't have to be a Lamborghini, okay? Um, and you don't have to be a, a Volkswagen, but I want all of us to strive to be this third car, okay? This is where the third car comes in, and I'm gonna use the analogy of a Lexus, okay? I think Lexus is a great car, um, maybe it's a little bit higher end, but I want you to think of whatever brand, doesn't matter, whatever car line you identify with that is super reliable, is sleek, and it lasts forever, okay? Longevity is key here, okay? So this is what we're working towards, being this Lexus, okay? So this is who we wanna be, right? This car is going to be, you know, the best because it's gonna last the longest, right? And it's, we can put in good gas or not so great gas, right? But it's still gonna run well because the, the engine is still amazing, okay? And that's what we wanna be. We wanna be the Lexus, right? This car takes both regular and premium gas, and it's gonna last forever. And when you take care of that engine, the car will last you a really long time. Like what, a Toyota, a Lexus, you know, they can last up to what, 200,000 miles, maybe a little bit less, depending on how you take care of it, right? And that's where exercise comes in. It depends on how you take care of your car. So exercise, why fitness matters, will help you last longer, and it's gonna make your engine stronger, okay? So, we're all gonna strive to be the Lexus. And I want you to think about this, guys. Like when you are looking for motivation to exercise um, and eat healthy, okay? Motivation to eat and exercise. And a lot of people in the group have said that they struggle with motivation to do one or both, okay? I want you to visualize the Lexus or visualize like whatever car it is, that, that third car, okay? Maybe it's a Toyota, maybe it's a Honda, whatever it is. I'm gonna say the Lexus, okay? Um, I want you to visualize the car. It's a way to imagine yourself in the driver's seat, okay? On your road to success, okay? Because you control the car, just like your body. You control this, okay? And I want you to understand, if you take care of your body, it will take care of you. That's one of my golden nutrition truths. Those of you who work with me, you know I say that. If you take care of your body, it will take care of you. So you can get away with having one too many glasses of wine. You can have tacos a few days a week. You can have pizza. Because if you're taking care of your engine, right, it, your body will metabolize it. And those of you who have thought, well, I'm 45, my metabolism shot. Mm -mm, not true. I work with women that are almost 60 and they'll tell you otherwise, okay? Age is a number. Um, metabolism dwindles, I think it's like, what, 3% every decade? It's really not that much. If you have questions about hormones, I can definitely talk to you about that. But typically, guys, it's not a metabolism issue unless you have like a severe thyroid. We can talk about that too. But typically, it's not metabolism. Typically, it's here mentally, you're thinking that. Or secondly, you're not doing what you need to do to tune your engine, which can be through exercise and taking care of your gut. Okay? So... Moving on from the car analogy. Well, another reason why fitness matters. Number one, I said health. Number two, tuning the engine, right? Number three is toning up. So most women and men, when they come to me, they're like, well, I wanna lose weight, but I wanna tone up, right? Toning up comes through fitness. You do not tone up through diet alone, right? Or diet can't tone you up. That's through fitness, right? That's through resistance training, which I'll talk about here in a little bit too, right? And getting strong is, you know, the fourth reason why fitness matters. As we age, it is so important to do resistance training. Oftentimes as we get older, we're nervous to lift weights or do any kind of resistance training. And I wanna tell you guys, like that's the most important time actually is when we are getting older and when we are worried about osteoporosis, arthritis, and you know, we're achy and we're feeling pains here and there. That's when movement, fitness, resistance training is so, so important as we get older, okay? But it's also great to start young so as we get older, as we age, we are, you know, our, our 
talking about an engine, like we're more lubricated, right? So we are in a much better place as we get older. Because it's much harder to start when you're older. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's good to start these habits younger, okay? Um, and then also weight loss, right? Yeah, we could definitely lose weight on just diet alone, but it's going to take you a lot longer, uh, especially if you do it in a healthy way and in a sustainable way with food freedom, eating the foods you love, right? It's going to take you a lot longer if fitness is not part of your regimen, right? So it will help accelerate weight loss, of course, um, and you can eat more calories at re you know, you burn more calories at rest the more muscle you have on your body, right? So that's where it's more important too. But also exercise fitness matters for weight maintenance. Those of you who are here because you've lost a lot of weight and now you're like, how do I maintain my weight loss? Fitness is a huge part of that, right? I said that, I said that earlier, I work out about five days a week, sometimes six, depends on my week, um, because I wanna maintain my body, right? And so, you know, we can't, maintenance is hard with nutrition. It's, it, it's part of it, but exercise is a big part of it too, okay? So that's why fitness matters, all those things I just mentioned. Okay, so what kinds of workouts should I do? Now, this is a goals and question. And I want to be really clear that I always emphasize to anyone I work with, and I say this in my workout videos, you know, doing all kinds of fitness is really important. So of course, you want to have a resistance training of some sort, you know, whether it's with free weights or bands, body weight exercise, um, you want to be resistance training, absolutely, because resistance training, right, so with bands, like I said, um, is going to help build tone muscles, build muscle mass, it's going to improve your bone density, it's going to give you that tone look, right, the more muscle mass you have on your body, the more calories you burn at rest, so if you want to improve your metabolism, you got to be doing resistance training right? It's super, super important. I always emphasize resistance training over cardio, all right? Here's why. Like I said, the more lean muscle mass you have on your body, the more calories will burn at rest, number one, but you're going to get that chiseled look. Also, anyone that really wants defined glutes, you want to build your booty, you want leaner legs, you want to have more, um, you know, abs showing, okay? When you do resistance training and you do it in a way that is, you know, we're really taxing the muscles and we're doing it in you know, like a circuit style training too, that's gonna burn a lot of calories, right? So, you know, let's say for example, you, you know, you're watching your watch, okay? Um, yeah, like cardio workouts might burn more calories during the workout, but when you're resistance training, your weight training, your EPOC, your excess post um, oxygen consumption, you're gonna burn more calories after the workout's over with weight as opposed to cardio, okay? So that's why weight training is really important. So I always recommend weight training three to five days a week, whatever your schedule allows. And I'm gonna talk about that here too, so just hold on tight there. Um, cardio, cardio is amazing for mental health. I think it's great if you have, um, you know, obviously burning fat is great for that too, but don't go overboard, I'll tell you why. Um, also, if you wanna run a race, it's good for that too, but cardio is great for your heart health as well. It is really important just for overall health in general, so cardio is important too. But also guys, we can't forget the third kind of exercise, which is flexibility and mobility work, okay? So yoga, I posted about this on Sunday. Yoga has become a big part of my life. Like I don't feel balanced without yoga work um, because I also notice I like weight training, but my, my hips and my legs, my hamstrings especially, like if they're tight, my workout's not nearly as effective and I get injured and it takes me away from my fitness routine. So I have to incorporate flexibility and mobility work. So whether it's yoga, whether it's foam rolling, whether it's some sort of dynamic and active stretching or just some static stretching, um, however it is you like to do your mobility and flexibility work, that is super, super important. And even if you guys see these like Olympic lifters, you see these crossfitters, you know, I'm sure if they're serious and they're smart about their training, right, they are doing some mobility work, right? And there are days where they're working, you know, smaller accessory work, like they're working the smaller parts of their shoulders, or, you know, they're working their, their smaller parts of their, their adductors, right, and their legs. So they're doing like small muscle days, big muscle days, they're doing mobility work. So it's all about a balanced routine, 
So it's strength training, cardio, and mobility and flexibility work, okay? Um, now, also, what kinds of workouts should I do? It really depends on your goals. Okay, so here's the example. A lot of women I work with, I used to teach, and I still do teach, like booty classes, right? Like I love to work glutes. I've done extensive training on the glutes. I know all about them. I love to work them. Um, now, if you want to grow your glutes, right, we got to focus on the glute training, right? So that means, you know, resistance training. The glutes are the biggest muscles in your body. So we have to put a lot of force, right, a lot of um, stress on the glutes with weights, you know, high reps sometimes, time under tension, all kinds of ways to do that. Um, so we have to do that multiple days a week, obviously. Now, if, if you are out running three or four days a week, okay, or doing a long distance running, that is going to break down the glutes. Running, I'm doing long distance running, and I was a runner, guys. I'm not knocking running. I'm just being straight honest with you about in terms of if you want to grow your glutes and you're out running half marathons, that's going to break down the glute muscles. Running is not a muscle sparing type of cardio. It is going to break down those muscles. And so that's why I always say if you want to grow your glutes, running a ton is not going to help you. Okay, now high end, like sprints is a whole different ball game because sprints work for your, um, the bigger muscles, right? For a short amount of time. So I'm all about doing sprints. That's fine um, if you want to grow your glutes, but long distance is not so great. So, but if you want to, if you have a goal to do a half marathon or a full marathon, you absolutely should be running more, right? And not hitting the gym doing, you know, deadlifts three days a week. That might not be part of your goal. It depends. It really depends on your goal. Um, if you want to just get strong, you want to be able to do pull-ups, okay? I want to be able to do 10, do 10 pull-ups. That's my goal. Out running is not going to help you, right? We got to really work on our back, our biceps, doing pull-ups, all that kind of work, right? So it really depends on your goal. I personally, when I moved down to Florida and I was like, well, it's hot. I don't like running on flat surfaces. I really got focused on strength training and I really wanted to get super strong. And so that's what I focused on, um, being able to hip thrust as heavy as I could and squat and deadlift, that kind of thing. Now I do a combination of both. I like to lift heavy. I like to run. I kind of mix it up a little bit, but that's just like what I enjoy doing. Um, so that's, that's the third part of my point here. What kind of workout should I do? I always tell people, do what you enjoy. That is the most important thing, especially if you're trying to make exercise a habit. What you do consistently is who you will become, right? I always say that. So do the exercise that you enjoy. I got to a point where I, you know, I didn't like running a lot anymore. When I lived in DC, I used to run all the time. Oh my God, I, would, I lived in Arlington. So I'd run over Key Bridge into Georgetown, run all over the city. Um, Abby, you know what I'm talking about. A lot of you guys in the group know. Um, and I enjoyed it. And I moved to Florida and I didn't. So I had to find something new. So I really got into strength training. Now I do a combination of both. And I got into dance cardio over the, the um, quarantine, right? So do what you like. So, for example, I have a client, Elise, and, you know, when we first started working together a few weeks ago, she was like, I really don't enjoy exercise, but I like dance. And I was like, all right, let's get you doing dancing, you know? So I share with her some of my favorite dance workouts, and, you know, now she's doing that, and she's doing some strength training because she wants to tone up. Um, but what I always recommend is doing something you enjoy, right? So if you don't enjoy strength training right now, that's okay. Don't start there. Um, start with something you like, so whether it's Zumba, if you like hiking, I love hiking, just came back from Colorado, love it, get outside and hike, if you like going for a beach walk, you know, I'll talk about walking here in a few minutes, um, get out and do that, just get, just get moving, all right, if you like band work, do more bands, I love TRX, right, do what you enjoy, yoga, awesome, do it, just get moving, don't overthink it, just get moving, okay, don't think about what's best, What's best is what you actually will do, okay? All right, number three, how often should I work out? The, well, remember, back to what the American Heart Association said, they're saying 150 minutes a week, 30 minutes, five days a week, that's what they're saying to you. Um, but that's for health, right? So what I wanna suggest here is, this is really subjective, right? And this is when clients ask me like, how often should I work out? I say, well, what's doable for you? Like, what's realistic? Like, how much time per week can you commit to exercise? Once I understand that, like, once I understand the schedule, then we can kind of go from there, right? 
So it really matters what's doable. So for example, like is does it make more sense for you to do like 30 minute workouts? Are you able to squeeze in 60 minutes a few days a week? What's your current fitness level? It really depends on your background, right? That's so important. You know, some people, they can't even do 30 minutes. They don't have 30 minutes, you know, to squeeze in a 30 minute workout. So sometimes what they'll do is they'll do 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes here and 10 minutes there. That's 30 minutes total. Or they'll start out with 10 minutes and just work up to 10, you know, to 20 minutes, to 30 minutes. Everyone is different. I don't like coming on here and saying you have to work out an hour, six days a week to get fit because that's bullshit. Okay. I mean, the only way that's not bullshit is if you're already super fit and you already have this level of fitness. Like for me, if I were to do 20 minute workouts three days a week, I wouldn't see any change in my body because my body is surpassed that, right? But if I'm a beginner and I start out with 10 minutes, two days a week, I might start to see some results, right? Depending on what I'm eating, of course, and my diet. It all goes hand in hand, right? It's never one or the other, it's always both. Remember that. Um, so yeah, so it really depends, you know, what is doable for you. And that's why I don't like coming out and saying like, okay, you have to work out five days a week or you have to work out three days a week. What's realistic, right? Where can we squeeze in 10 minutes? Where can we squeeze in five minutes? I have some five minute workouts that I've given to people because I want something that you can actually do and that you, don't, you feel confident doing, okay? I'm working with an 11 year old right now and we're doing 30 minutes right now. Um, and that's just doing great with it. And we'll work up. We'll work up, but it's really important just to start somewhere. All right, let me talk about this. What about walking? Okay, so if you are a beginner, like let's say like you're not doing any working out right now, absolutely the first place I want you to start is with walking. Walking is the easiest, the cheapest thing you can do, not just for your physical health, but for your mental health. Getting outside, okay? It should be warm everywhere now in North America, right? I have a client in Seattle. I know sometimes in Seattle, it's like what, in the 40s in the morning. Crazy to me. You're in Florida. I'm dying. It's like 100 right now. Um, but get outside. Get some vitamin D. Oh my God, stop taking the pill. Get outside. Get in the sunlight, okay? So get outside. Get some fresh air. Get walking, okay? Start. If you have a fitness watch, all right, so right out with a goal. Say, I'm gonna try to get 3,000 steps today um, and then work your way up, right? Whatever it is. Like, and, and some of you are probably thinking, Kristen, 3,000 steps, that's nothing. Well, if you're, not, if you're only at 1,000 right now, 3,000 sounds like a lot, right? So like, we can't compare ourselves to other people. I never want you guys to think, okay, I'm gonna do exactly what Kristen does because what I do doesn't matter. What matters is what can you do? That's the most important thing. When I work with people, it's not about me, it's about them, right? How many steps can you commit to? 5,000? Awesome. Kristen, what should I do? Well, what can you do, right? If you want to know what I do, I'll tell you, right? I mean, me, I probably get 15 a day, right? But I walk my dog, I got to train people, like, I get a lot of steps pretty easily. That's just my life. Um, but was I always doing that? No. You guys, when I was in college, I was probably getting... 25,000 steps a day. I walked all around Penn State, but I was eating like shit, right? So you would never know how much I was walking because my diet was terrible. Um, I wasn't even a big drinker. I just ate a ton of food. Um, so yeah, steps doesn't, just because I walk 25,000 steps doesn't mean I'm gonna be skinny or I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose weight, right? It doesn't matter. Um, but walking is amazing if you're a beginner to start doing some kind of exercise. Um, another way walking is amazing. Those of you who did my challenge, you know all about walking. Walking is a form of NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Okay, it's an acronym, NEAT. And what NEAT is great is that it's gonna help you guys burn more calories throughout the day without doing a physical workout, okay? So for example, if I work out, like I'm gonna do an hour workout tomorrow here in the group, right? At 9.30, booty and back, we're gonna use bands only. It's gonna be amazing, FYI. But let's say I'm gonna do my workout tomorrow. Does that mean I'm done moving for the day? No, no, I'm gonna be on my computer. I've got calls, I've got stuff going on. Um, but I am gonna get outside and get walking. When I wake up in the morning, I go for a walk with my dog. Okay, um, that's like 15 minutes. It helps me wake up. I drink my coffee. I listen to a podcast. Um, yes, I love coffee. Never giving up coffee unless someone like drags, pulls it out of my hand. 
Um, but walking is a great part of my morning. I love walking um, after I eat. I try to do that. Um, it helps with my to my engine, as I was saying before. Um, walking is super, super important, right? Just also for like anyone with back issues. Oh my God, you're sitting all day? Get up and walk. You'll notice such a big difference. Um, so definitely that's why getting those steps in can be a great goal because it reminds us, right, to get up and walk. Okay, sitting disease has become such a problem in our society, right? So for example, HDL, right, it's bad cholesterol. Um, so for example, if we, um, I'm sorry, no, oh yeah. So if we're sitting down all day, right, we're gonna increase our chances of raising our bad cholesterol, okay? So that's why when we get up, move around, it's gonna help get those steps in. So walking, although if you're a beginner, it's great exercise. If you don't do anything right now, if you are just starting out, let's say you have a very large weight loss goal, I would start with walking, okay? If you're more of a moderate exerciser, if you're more advanced and you're looking to take things to the next level, burn some extra calories, you're already working out, add more walking into your day. Definitely a game changer, okay? Make time for it too. Get your family involved, get your friends involved, call people, listen to a podcast, whatever you have to do, get out and walk. Become a neat freak. Ask my ladies, they know all about being a neat freak here in the group. Okay, what else do I wanna talk about? Oh, last thing. How do I motivate myself to exercise? Oh my goodness, I love this question. I love that movement motivation. This is a whole week in my 12 week program talking about movement motivation, okay? So there's several ways to do this. I'm gonna share about five of them, six actually right now. All right, because I know this is something that's come up for people in the group. Number one, I said this before, do what you enjoy. That is the most important thing. Honestly, like I look forward to my Wednesdays when I do booty and back because I love working booty and I love working my back. Those are my two favorite muscle groups. And I'm crazy. But guys, 10 years ago, I didn't think this way. Right? This took me years to figure it out. Um, so I look forward to that. Upper body day, not so much. Like I don't like working, I don't like doing bicep curls, triceps, like I don't enjoy that stuff. But I do it because I know it makes me feel good later. Um, but do what you like. I look forward to Wednesdays. Um, if you like d dancing, do dance workouts. Don't worry about what I do or what some CrossFit person telling you to do. So if your friends go to Orange Theory, oh, I should go do Orange Theory with them. If you don't like that, if running on a treadmill like literally pains you, don't freaking do it. No one ever said you could only get fit by running on a treadmill. That's insane. I will run outside, but I hate running on a treadmill for more than 10 minutes. I don't. And actually, guys, I used to teach 30-minute treadmill workouts. There's a few of you in the group that used to do them with me um, at my gym. I taught treadmill workout classes. I used to like them. Oh, my God, I used to love them. Now I'm like, ugh, forget it. I can't do more than 10 minutes on a treadmill, right? Um, it's, just, it's just, I can't. It's a mental thing, I guess. But I don't have to do it, right? So do what you like. If you like yoga, get into yoga. Pilates, bar. Um, I love band work on the mat. Oh, my God, love it. So do what you like, okay? That's number one. Number two, this is important. Write this down if you especially struggle here. Be outcome focused, not process focused, okay? What I mean by that is this. A lot of times when we think about working out, okay, we think of all the things we have to do before, during, and then, you know, actually, I shouldn't say this. We always think about what to do beforehand and during. We don't think about after. We're like, oh, I have to get dressed. I have to go, you know, put on workout clothes that are too tight. I don't like how I look in my workout clothes. I don't know where my sneakers are. Are these sneakers okay? I don't even know. My feet hurt. I'm gonna get blisters. Um, you know, you're just like lethargic and just like don't feel like getting up. You have a long work day. You know you only are gonna work out if it's at like 6 a.m. You're like, oh, I don't wanna set my alarm, okay? So we think of all the things we have to do before. I gotta go to, go to bed early. You know, I have to have, make sure I have water and coffee and maybe eat something before. Like, oh, you're just dreading all these things. You are so trapped in your mind with all the things you have to do before you work out and you haven't even done it, right? And as Tony Robbins always says, when you stay in your head, you are dead, right? You're talking yourself out of a workout, right? What if I embarrass myself with this workout class? What if I can't finish it, right? Um, I don't wanna pay to go to this workout and then I suck at it. What if I get hurt? What if I'm really sore? Like, you're already talking yourself out of it, right? So you're, be, you're being process focused, right? 
Or you're like, you're during the work and you're like, oh, like this doesn't feel good. Like this sucks. Like I don't want to do this, right? This is not worth it. I want you to stop right there when that question comes up. Is that true? Is it true that that workout is not worth it? The answer is going to be no, right? Because of this, you know it's worth it. And when you know it's worth it, that's what I mean by being outcome focused, okay? Because you know that that workout, right? How do I motivate myself to work out? You're, you know it's worth it because of your health, your immune system, your mental health, your goals. You want stronger glutes? You want to go run that half marathon? You want to fit into those pants? You want to be able to walk up a flight of stairs and not get out of breath? You want to run around with your kids? You want to be able to go walk around Europe with your family, but you can't right now? You want to be able to go on the beach and walk through the sand without getting out of breath? You want to do all those things? That's why fitness matters. And that's how you motivate yourself. We connect to your why, your reason for wanting food freedom and wanting to change your life and change your body and change your health because you're worth it. That's how you motivate yourself to exercise. And that is when you connect to the, you connect the dots, right? That's why fitness matters. You are outcome focused. You're not stuck in the process. Right? You guys, when I work, when you see me tomorrow at 930 in the workout, like I sometimes struggle during those workouts and I'm freaking on camera and I'm like, come on guys, let's go get lower, whatever. And like I'm struggling. Right. And I'm like, oh, I can't wait for this to be over. Of course, those thoughts go through my mind, but does that stop me from going and showing up every week? No, no, because I know it's worth it. I know it matters. I know it matters. And that's what motivates me. Okay, um, and, I, and this is my third thing, but I already talked about it, connect with your why. So remember why you're doing it, why you're showing up in fitness. I go to yoga, I'll tell you what guys, sometimes I'm like, oh, like yoga, I'd rather just stay home and stretch. But like when I go to a yoga class, I feel so much better. Yoga means community. I like being with people, um, it pushes me through the yoga. Yoga is something if I do it at home, I'm not gonna push myself as much. I have to go with an instructor, I have to watch someone or go to a class. Um, then I push myself with yoga. So, um, because I know if I don't do yoga, my workouts are going to suck. And it really puts me in a better mental space when I go to yoga. I don't stress as much after. <laughs> okay. So I love, love, love yoga. All right. Um, workout clothes. Oh, I was talking earlier about um, fitness clothes. Sometimes, you know, if we, we can have external circumstances, we can have external motivators. It's called extrinsic motivation, right? things that motivate us to work out. So there have been times, like, I'll be honest, there was probably a week during COVID where I was like, ah, oh, like, I just don't, I'm not in the mood. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm sore, like, I don't feel like working out. And then I saw there was a sale coming up, Memorial Day weekend, right, sale. And I actually ended up getting these pants and a sports bra. But I was like, I am not buying myself new clothes, right, unless I get through this week of workouts, right? So you can use workout clothes as a little motivator. That's just like a little side tip, right? Um, or, you know, you get through a month of your workouts, treat yourself to a massage. Or, you know, it doesn't have to be food related, right? Remember that food doesn't have to be a reward. There's so many of our ways to reward yourself without food. Maybe it's a manicure. Maybe it's, you know, out with your husband somewhere. I was gonna say dinner or a movie, but that's really not, that's hard to do right now. Um, but find a way to reward yourself that's not food related if you get through these workouts. Because you gotta start creating that habit. You gotta start somewhere, right? So the best way to, to create a habit is just to get started. Just jump right in. Don't overthink it. Get out of your head. When you're in your head, you're dead. All right? Um, number four, or five, I guess, make it social, right? I'm a fitness trainer, right? Like I train people for a living. I still like to take classes. I teach classes now on Zoom and here in the Facebook group, but I still do like to go to gyms. I haven't since COVID happened um, and take classes. But you know, once things are back to normal, right? Or if there's Zoom classes you're available to you know to take and you can see people, you know, make it social. Like go take a class or get with a couple of friends and in social distance, obviously, but go for a walk somewhere. Um, oftentimes, like if we want to start walking and making that a routine and we're bored walking by ourselves, recruit some other people. Or, you know, if you have a friend that lives in San Francisco and you live in New York, you know, be like, hey, like, well, I guess it's, that's the time zone's different, but maybe you can coordinate it. Or maybe you have like 
a friend in your time zone, whatever, say, hey, let's go on a, a walk at six o'clock. You could talk to each other, FaceTime, make it social, right? You don't walk by yourself, right? Or you have a dog, oh my God, take your dog for a freaking walk and they will love it. Whenever I go, I just take my dog. He just, he loves it, okay? Make it social. Um, but if none of those sound appealing to you, you've tried all those things, you've heard all those things, and you're like, Kristen, I've heard this, this is nothing new, I totally get it, okay? And what I want to be really honest with you about is that there's still something going on deep down. There's some reservations, some reservations or some hesitance about exercise. Okay, so there is a struggle there. Sorry, my, my computer's froze for a second. Um, there might be some fears about exercise, maybe the lack of confidence in working out. You're afraid of getting hurt. You're afraid of, um, you know, something, right? And I'll be honest that I've worked with people sometimes that they're almost afraid to lose weight um, or change their body because they're afraid of like what that will change in their life. Like, will they get more attention, less attention, or how will it change things for them? There's so many things, so many, so many circumstances, right? So if there's outside circumstances, right, you're like, I just, I physically don't have the time. I have, I really struggle with energy. Um, you know, that's something we can definitely talk about because I, I understand. I've heard it, I've seen it, and I can definitely help with that. But Something else, guys, I want to share to you, like how to motivate you to exercise. A lot of it's lack of motivation, right? And, and well, I shouldn't say that. Lack of motivation comes from lack of confidence, right? So when you're not confident, like you've been working out for years and you're not seeing results, and you're like, screw it, I give up, right? That lack of confidence is always going to make you not want to do this. So, so you're like, why bother, right? Um, that is where mindset's going to come into play, right? That like, that discipline and that desire. Right, a lot of it's up here, right? And that's exactly what I'm gonna talk about tomorrow. So make sure you join me tomorrow at 2.30 talk about mindset, to have that like relentless motivation um, to not just work out, but to eat healthy, to walk, right? And to really tune your engine. Oh, that's uh, so, so important, tuning your engine. Okay, that's really tomorrow I'm gonna talk about. Okay, so I am at 47 minutes in, which is still longer <laughs> than I wanted to train, but that's okay. So what I'll do at this point, guys, is I want to take some questions. Um, I don't see, uh, guys, like my screen's kind of like messed up right now, so I can't see anything. I can't see if anyone's with me, so I've just been talking. So I want you guys to comment below if you have any questions about anything that I've been saying for the last 47 minutes about fitness. Um, if there are no questions, just comment, like, was this helpful to you guys? You know, what are your favorite kind of workouts? Um, what are you going to do this week to get moving? Are you going to join me tomorrow for my 9.30 a.m. workout? All right, so go ahead and comment below. So while I'm waiting for some comments here, I'm going to share with you a couple of things. So if you are looking for a new style of workout, right, or you want to see what it looks like to, you know, lift weights, you know, do cardio, do, you know, light weights, do band work, Join me for one of my Wednesday workouts. I'm not going to be doing them that much longer. My schedule is changing a little bit. I'll be making some announcements. Um, but I am teaching tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. 9.30 to 10.30 is all booty, booty glutes and back. All you're going to need is a resistance band. I'll make a, a post in the group here. Um, so work out with me one day. Um, I also offer Zoom trainings Tuesdays and Fridays at 9 a.m. Eastern time. This is all Eastern time. Um, and we usually use weights and bands for that. That's a great little community I've posted in the group before. Um, you'll see some of my CMW clients and some others. Um, so join me for those workouts. And if you've never joined before, your first one's always free. So join me for the workout, okay? Um, so that's how to work out with me. And then there's also lots of other workouts in the group. You can just search workouts and you'll see a bunch come up that I've done over the quarantine. So check those out. But last but not least, guys, tomorrow I am going over my favorite and most important part of the food freedom, um, you know, whole philosophy. No, I shouldn't say philosophy. This is a, this is a process. It's a plan. It's a strategy. Um, the whole, the biggest part of the strategy is mindset tomorrow. So if you're struggling with motivation, if you're struggling with consistency, if you're struggling with discipline, willpower, whatever you want to call it, join me tomorrow. All right, 2.30 Eastern time, I'm gonna get real deep 
on this topic and I'm so, so excited for it. So I hope this helped you guys. If you're catching the replay, make sure you comment below. Let me know if this helped you guys. Any questions, you can comment as well. And I hope this served you and I hope to see you guys at the training tomorrow at 2.30 or also in the workout, all right? Talk to you guys soon, bye.